Welcome back, New World. Seth here, here, your source of quality New World information. Ah, you like that intro? Change it up a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but definitely going to sit here and talk about a few things today. And the topic that I had in mind was how to make money on the auction house and the market, but early, right? So we all know that the release is coming up on the 28th. And the issue is that everyone is going to want gold and there's not going to be a lot of gold to go around. I know a lot of companies are aiming for the server claims on the server, which are 100,000 gold each. The upgrades are not cheap as well, so just keep that in mind. You're going to need a lot of gold, and especially if you're a player who's attempting to level up any sort of crafting profession or things of that nature, it's definitely going to be a bit of a struggle for you as you progress through. Not to mention there are other expenses like houses and property tax and things of that nature. So we're going to go ahead and break this down into maybe day by day uh, for the server launch. So we'll look at day one, day two, and day three, and we'll see how these look. And then from day three onward, we'll just assume this is gonna be like a market evolution, right? So we'll count that as end game market at that point. Um, come day three, I think people would be getting close to the end game and you should be able to identify most of what's going to be good for you there. We'll do an additional guide to cover the end game full market, but we don't exactly know what that looks like as we haven't seen a mass quantity players at level 60 before, right? Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, hang tight on that one. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. We're looking at day one. This is the server has just came out, right? We're talking the 28th. And so your best source of gold here, and it's gonna sound weird, just quests, honestly. Because the thing is that gold is gonna be a very finite resource, especially early on. It's not gonna be a lot of it going around in the economy. It's coming from quests. It's coming very small amounts from monster drops, maybe from like a treasure chest from fishing or, or something here and there. But mostly all of this gold is coming from quests. You get about 570 gold when you do choose your faction. So at the time in which you get to the point where you choose your faction right around level nine and complete that quest line, you will have 570 gold. So you can expect that to be times the amount of people on the server that's going to be available in the market, right? Now here's the caveat. Not everyone is going to want to get rid of their gold and you have to figure out how you can get that gold out of their pockets and into your pocket. And that's gonna be a hard task to do, especially with companies being so competitive and everybody trying to get the towns first. Uh, so you're gonna to have to be very innovative and you're gonna also have to think of ways that you can kind of make this happen, right? So what are the best ways to do this? So questing is gonna be your best source of gold on day one. Your second best source of gold, in my opinion, is probably gonna come from quality of life items. And this is gonna be items that you yourself may buy, right? And so if you would consider buying this item, the logic stands that someone else may do the same, right? So they're not gonna take your trash items. They're gonna take very specific items that they want. And in my opinion, on launch day, this is gonna be tools and bags very, very heavily, right? Everyone's gonna want tools and bags. If you can be the first person to reach steel tools, then you are gonna make a lot of money on the auction, especially in your given region. Remember that each auction is different. You have to travel to the different territories to buy from that auction. You can look at all the auctions in the top right. There's a drop down menu in the trading post, which will allow you to see auctions from every town. But just keep in mind that you still have to go there. And Azoth becomes an issue once people start fast traveling a little too much, right? Um, it's one of those like, you have a lot until you don't. And then when you don't, it becomes a severe problem. Uh, so the auction house is going to be a great way to do that. And selling tools is going to be a fantastic way to go because not everyone's going to want to stop to level up uh, engineering, right? Not everyone's going to want to do that. They're not going to understand where to gather the certain things or what town to go to to craft that. And so if you can be one of the first people to craft steel tools and maybe even the upgrade after that, which will be in a later day, um, you will make a lot of money. If you can be some of the first people to start crafting bags, especially bags with good perks, everyone is going to buy that second bag when their second bag slot unlocks, but they may consider it a little bit earlier with the first bag slot because the basic bag that you get only gives 50 encumbrance as opposed to, I think, about 100 for the first craftable bag. So you could make some money off of that. 
the next go-to item that I think will probably make money on day one, in my opinion, will be anything on the town board. So anything that the town board requires as a turn-in, and especially materials that are hard to get, like fishing. Right? So no one's going to want to spend their time, well, maybe not no one, most people are not going to want to spend their time to get fillets and things of that nature and the fishing oil because it's hard, right? Like it's difficult to do. You have to commit a lot of time to fishing and you have to get lucky to some degree. Uh, so not everyone's going to want to do that. They're going to want to be power leveling. So if you're able to sell fillets and fish oil and certain things and materials, if you want to forego leveling faster and make gold, this could be the way to go. So remember, things that people need will be a high priority. Another thing that I think might be pretty popular is potions. Um, maybe weak potions, because some people are just seem to not want to craft these for some reason, but you can put them super cheap on the auction house. It's actually really easy to get herbs, especially in first light. You can go down there and get like 200 herbs in like five minutes, roughly, maybe even less. And you can put all those, um, you know, potions on the auction house. And if you set the price cheap enough, someone might be like, hey, 50 week health potions. Hold on, I could spam those and it's only like 100 gold. All right. And there's this weird sense of like money value in the early game, right? Because you get such a big influx, like 500 gold, and then you get more towards 1,000 gold later. And then that's where you're just like, oh yeah, I have gold. I'm going to get plenty of gold. But trust me, that creeps off in the mid game, in the late game. You start getting less gold but you start realizing that your gold is coming from quests. So after that, you got to figure out how do you get gold once you run out of quests, right? <laughs> and that's the interesting thing uh, here. So those are probably my big go-to tips for day one. Day two, I think the best items that are going to be selling is going to be probably tools of a higher caliber. So if you can get up to the star metal, I think it might be possible at that point i um, not super sure, but if you can get up towards there, definitely, if, if not day two, definitely the end of day two, start of day three, but try to creep up your tool and bag uh, slots a bit better. I know for a fact you can probably get the bags up there, so, you know, being able to get tier two bags would probably go a long way, right? That was the thing that I came to. Once everybody starts hitting, like, level 20, 25, 30, they start wanting extra bags. They're like, oh, man, like, I can't carry anything. I need something. I need space. And if you can get some bags with some nice perks using Azoth, especially anything like luck on that bag, it will sell for a lot on the auction house, I can tell you that. Um, and then that's going to go into our second best buy here on day two, which is going to be items. Um, I don't think day one many people are going to be buying items, but day two you're going to be getting into Amarine Dungeon. And when you do, you're going to see a lot of items be dropping from there. The items you should look out for are items with main stat priority. So like something that has pure strength, right? Heavy armor will generally sell very well because a lot of people are going to want heavy armor in order to stay um you know healthy during these amarine dungeon runs healthy in pvp it just seems to be kind of the way to go at the moment i think some light armor will sell but probably not too much there will also probably be some people that will be running luck pieces and myself included i will be running a luck set with the, uh, you know, utilizing the high watermark system. If you don't know what that is, uh, I made a few videos uh, called the monster loot drop and info uh, section. So you can check that out. Um, but high watermark is just your highest gear score equipped in every combat slot, right? And it saves that and it gives you loot of that gear score relative to that level, if it's possible. Uh, so if you combine that with having some luck items, then you can find all of a sudden high gear score blues or high gear score purples and then these are really really good right so this is a nice thing to do so anything with luck on it people are going to be looking for skinning crafting luck regular luck all this stuff people are going to be wanting because this is the area in which you first start unlocking the ability to find things like this uh so amaride will make you a lot of gold throw these greens up on the auction house 100 200 gold if it's a blue, try it for 500. Sometimes people buy these things. I've sold several blues from there, 500, 700 gold. It's insane. So it's crazy. You can make all kinds of money off of people just looking to get that edge in leveling. And that's what you want to capitalize on. So these are definitely some good go-tos. Um, I wouldn't spend too much time crafting like items on day two. 
but I would invest um, in maybe like leveling up your jewel crafting and things like that because that'll be really important for day three and that's what we'll start talking about here. Uh, day three. I think the biggest thing on day three is going to be jewelry. Everyone and their grandmother is going to want jewelry on this day because they're going to be hitting like level 40, 30, 40. And they lock the ability to wear an amulet, a ring, and then at level 40, it's earrings. And oh man, let me tell you, it's so bad. There, there is so hard to find jewelry. It really is. Especially jewelry that's your right stat. Because like the quests, yeah, they do sometimes give a jewelry piece. But if they do, it's like got some weird stat on it, like just constitution or like focus. And you're sitting there as like a major in Axes and you're like, why do I have a focus ring at 230 item level and I'm level 40? Like what, what's happening here? You just don't get anything. So if you can craft these items, you can make some solid rings with some good attributes that people want, like pure strength, pure dex, pure intellect. They're going to buy them. They are going to buy them. And I've seen these rings go in the auction house, 1,000, 2,000 gold. It's insane. So figure out what you can sell them for. What what can you get away with? What's worth it? And experiment, right? Remember, each market is different too. Windsward is different from Everfall. So you might be able to be the Everfall jewel crafter while someone else is the Windsward uh, jewel crafter. So that's definitely going to be a good go-to for day three. Day three is right around the time where you start getting purples as well, up in that 40 range. If you can be the first person to get some purples, then you can make quite a big chunk of money. So again, a general theme to a lot of this stuff is getting ahead of the curve. Like there's two strategies. You get ahead of the curve in terms of levels, or you get ahead of the curve in terms of crafting levels. And both of these are great, right? Day three will also be huge for star metal tools. This is going to be your biggest prime time to sell these because people will be able to equip them at level 40. Um, I think I did mention that you could craft them before at um, in day two, but that was just to prep you kind of for this day three because you can't actually equip them until this point. Uh, so really just kind of getting that mining up, getting that uh, engineering up so that you can craft these items is gonna really start to pay off when you start seeing star metal tools selling for 3k 2k maybe even more everyone's gonna be bringing you materials asking you to craft them you could just power level your engineering straight up just with materials from your company and guild those people like hey can you make me a thing like yeah no problem just get me this this and that and you know these are the kind of things that you want to look for in that so that those are going to be your good go-to's like this is going to be your best way to make money in the first three days after that you're probably looking at in-game money making and i'll touch very briefly because we don't know exactly what that looks like but i have a few ideas and maybe some hints i can throw at you but anything revolving around a component for a tuning orb is going to be big money anything revolving around a component to craft the ori calcum uh, 500 plus gear score items will be big money because they do make best in slot in game items. Uh, so if you can get up to that 200 crafting skill, it's going to be very important because you will start making items like Asmodium and Glitterwood and things like that. Uh, I think it's called Glitterwood, Glitter or something. Uh, but anyways, the epic variant of all the uh, refining stations, right? Those are one day cooldown items. You can make so many per day, right? And they're used as a supplement to bump up the gear score of the crafted item so you can reach a high level. And you will need these. You will need these. They're going to be a precious commodity. So just keep that in mind. Um, so going forward into that, you know, you're looking at items with perfect luck on them in the end game. That's also going to be a really good desirable stat. You are looking for items that give expertise so items that are going to give like plus three to the skill of a crafted armor item armor smithing item these are going to be highly valuable there's some like cooking hats and things that double have a chance to double the product made uh, so all these items are going to be unique niche items that you're going to need to take a look out for there's also uh legendary piece items that you could possibly sell and trade to people uh, so this would be a good thing to do because some people will be wanting to craft some of these legendaries and I think that pretty much covers most of it. I think potions will probably be a good thing in the end game, like consumable pots, like corrupted high level pots, high level health pots, things like that, that people need as consumable basis. Uh, but that's just going to be like, you know, you got to farm. Um, obviously, high level bags is a given, tier five bags with like really good. 
And I think that about sums it up. Thank you for watching everyone. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. We do have a join button now. If you're really interested in the channel, you can support us there. And we have a couple of cool badges, emojis, and things of that nature. Some nice perks as well, so be sure to check that out. We also have a Discord. A lot of people are joining now. We just announced it today and opened it up. So get in there, interact with the community. It's a great place to find info and tons of friends. And we will catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching everyone.